press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hi students, welcome to your lesson India Land Resources. Today we are going to continue with where we stopped in the previous class. Last class we studied about the land pattern use of India and uh, how the land is being classified into net zone, forest and land not available for cultivation, fallow land, cultivable wasteland, permanent pastures and other grazing land, land under miscellaneous use. And then we followed into agriculture. We studied the meaning and we studied the types of agriculture. In that we studied the first one that subsistence farming which was divided into two shifting and sedentary farming. So today we'll go on to the other uh, types of farming, okay? And then we'll go into the uh, crop seasons. So the second one is intensive farming. intensive farming. Now, in intensive farming, there is a lot of money that is involved, a lot of people are involved, okay, a lot of labor and see, there are blocks done, okay. Investment is done, investment is done on both these blocks and a lot of labor is employed to each unit that is called as intensive farming. Now, in this, uh, in this farm of land, the crops are grown on a whole, uh, for a whole year, okay, crops are grown for the whole year. Then, uh, farmers try to raise two or more crops in the same land, okay, so that they get a uh, lot of production, lot of uh, crops are grown and their profit also increases. They take these small pieces of land and that's how they divide it uh, for uh, money and depending on labor. Now, this is mostly done where the soil is very fertile and irrigation is possible, okay? Where there is uh, water, where there is the soil is fertile, this intensive farming can be useful. The next is commercial farming. commercial farming. Commercial is for the process pro, for the process of or for profits, okay, for selling of these crops, which are, these are basically grown to send it to the market. So when you're sending it to the market, uh, you make a lot of profit. So to send it to the market, that's called as the commercial farming. Now only uh, cash crops are grown here like wheat, coffee, tea, Okay, potatoes, onion, these kind of cash crops are grown, which are grown at a larger sector on a larger land, so that goes to the market. Now here they use a lot of less amount of labor because once you sow it, it's just done, you'll just have to pick. Now if you put potatoes, you'll have to look after it for some time, then it takes its own time to grow and then just you have to uh, pick it out, okay. Then machinery is not used to that much scientific. Methods of cultivation are also very less used, not uh, used in abundance, but very less. Next is mixed farming. Okay, mixed farming. What's mixed farming? Cultivation of uh, crops as well as rearing of animals, your livestock, okay, like cow, uh, sheep, goat all those you keep livestock that is there and you're rearing those animals on the other side you're also doing your agriculture okay now uh, rearing of livestock has also been um, brought out into a broader concept of agriculture whereas here uh, mixed is cultivation of crops as well as rearing of animals is called as mixed farming now farmers are getting both income from both the sides and it was introduced in India in 
51. So now it has become popular in many states. The fifth one is plantation farming. Plantation is tea, coffee, okay. Plantation farming. Now they are uh, growing one single crop in a large sector or a large land, large estate that is for the market. Now they require a lot of labor, they require a lot of money, they require a lot of investment into it. Coffee, coffee tea, rubber, okay, coconut, these are plantation crops grown in India. Next one is dry farming. Dry farming. This is where there is scanty rainfall or less rainfall that is there and where irrigation is very limited or it is not present at all. Okay, that is called as dry farming. Now, this is practiced in peninsular India and uh, western Rajasthan, west side of Rajasthan. Next is humid farming. Humid farming, okay. Humid farming is uh, where there is sufficient rainfall, the atmosphere is bright, the atmosphere is fine, okay, where there, uh, there, uh, there is amount, enough amount of sufficient amount of uh, water, crops are grown also with the help of irrigation along with rainfall that is there. Now this is there in the west coast and uh, where areas where sufficient rainfall is available. Next is irrigation facilities, irrigation farming. Okay, irrigation farming, crops that are grown uh, with the help of irrigation, okay, artificial means of uh, uh, what is that, water sources that are there, artificial ways of uh, enhancing your agriculture, enhancing the production of crops. Okay, and that is called as irrigation farming. It is a little expensive because uh, India does not get equally distributed rainfall. Uh, on some sides there are, uh, on some sides there are heavy, there is heavy rainfall, on some sides there is no heavy rainfall. So, some sides it is very scanty, very less, okay. and. Uh, <coughs> That is why where irrigation is used, it is also very expensive. Next we will see crop season and cropping pattern. This is the uh, types of farming. crop season and cropping pattern. Now, these crops are crops that are based on different seasons are known as cropping season. See now the word itself is giving you the meaning. So you just have to frame the sentence. What is that? The crops that are grown based on seasons are called as cropping seasons. So it is divided into three the Kharif, Rabi and Zaid crops. What are the three types of crops according to the season? The Rabi, Karif and the Zaid crops. Now the Karif crop is grown during rainy season and that is why it is called Karif. So when do they sow the seeds? They sow the seeds in June and July when the southwest, uh, southwest monsoon starts uh, blowing and crops are harvested during uh, September just like paddy that is there. Paddy that is there, okay. It's sown during uh, that time, rainy season, and then it's harvested after the 
after the rainy season. So, yeah, harvested in September. Now, what's the example of this? That's rice, that's paddy, jowar, ragi, cotton, groundnuts, tobacco. These are the karif crops. Rabi crops are, their sowing takes place somewhere in October to November when the northeast monsoons are coming. And these are harvested in uh, March or February. So that is why they are known as Rabi crops. Wheat, barley, gram, millet, okay, linseed, all these crops. Then the Zaid crops are, these are, uh, these are the crops that are grown between Karif and Rabi. Okay, between Karif and Rabi that is grown is called as Zaid crops, that is melons, cucumber, okay, oil seeds, pulses, vegetables, these are Zaid crops. Let's see the cropping patterns. Okay, now cropping pattern, what's a pattern? Pattern refers to different patterns that are there in whichever is suitable for my land. I will have to use it. I cannot be using which you use or you cannot be using which I uh, use, okay? So according to different areas, different crops are uh, done in the same way or different crops are done at the given time that is uh, according to the three seasons that are there, okay? Now uh, factors that can influence is your soil, your climate, okay, uh, the rainfall that is there, how much of land do you have? Do you have water supply? Do you have a lot of labor for it? Okay, how will you give your income? What, how will the farmers get inform, uh, income? Or how, or what kind of scientific methods will you use? What kind of technology, uh, technological aspects will you use? So these are the ways which um, influence your uh, decide, decision on uh, determining a pattern for your crops. Okay. So now next we'll see the major crops in uh, major crops of India. Now different parts of India have different kinds of food crops that are grown. Some are plantations, some are commercial, some are for oil and other purposes. Okay, we will see food uh, crops first. Okay, food crops, two of them are given, that is rice and wheat. Now rice is a staple food, okay. Most of them eat rice and that is how uh, it's taken by most of the people in India. Uh, it's all, uh, food crops also include jowar and pulses. So rice has become uh, the staple food of eastern, southern and the southwestern parts of India. So people uh, in India, a lot of people, la large population eats rice uh, for maybe three times a day or two times a day. And uh, India is the second larger producer of uh, rice only after China. So we stand in the second position uh, of producing rice. Now rice is one of the major karif crops of India. That's what I told you. They uh, sow it in and the rainy season and then they harvest it later. Now it's a tropical crop which requires a temperature of 18 degree to 25 degree Celsius and a rainfall of 100 to 200 centimeter per year. Now what kind of soil is best suited for this is clay soil that is a, an alluvial soil. Uh, rice needs, if you've gone to the paddy fields, you see the rice, the, uh, the water that is made to stay there because the, the crop needs water there, okay standing water, still water that is there for the crops, okay, and the land that is very uh, on the surface very level. So irrigation is also necessary where rainfall is less. 
West Bengal is the largest producer of rice in the country. Okay, the other important producers are Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Odisha, and Karnataka. So wheat stands as the second important food crop and one of the major rabi crops of India. Wheat is also a staple food among the northwestern parts of India. Now we in the south have staple food of rice, but in the north it is wheat. Okay, it's a crop which also requires a certain kind of temperature of 10 degree to 15 degree uh, moderate temperature Celsius moderate, moderate temperature and a rainfall of 50 to 70 centimeter. Now what's best suited for this is heavy loams and black soil. Black soil is mostly used suited for wheat cultivation. Now, wheat is grown in the northern plains that is Punjab, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra and the northern part of Karnataka. Uttar Pradesh is the largest producer of wheat in India. India is the largest wheat producer uh, next to China in the world. So we stand in the uh, second position in both rice and wheat next to uh, China. After that is commercial crops. Commercial crops, sugarcane, tobacco, okay, sugarcane and Tobacco. Now sugar cane is what is commercial for the purpose of the market, for the purpose of sale. India, has, India is also the world's largest producer of uh, sugar cane, okay, it is the second largest again next to Brazil. Sugar cane is a native to India, okay, it, it's our native, it is a crop of our native. Now the main source that we get from sugar cane is sugar, gur and uh, Kandasari. Sugar cane uh, is an annual crop, it grows every year okay, and it is grown in irrigated areas. It requires a temperature of 21 to 26 degrees Celsius and a rainfall of 100 to 150 centimeter per annum. Now it is best suitable in alluvial and loamy soils. Now where is this found? Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh. Tobacco. This is one of the cash crops that are there, okay. It is used for smoking like bidi, cigarette, cigar, chirut and hookahs, okay. So a uh, few of, a little of it is used for chewing, snuffing and insecticides. It's also a tropical crop which requires a temperature of 21 to 23 degrees Celsius and a rainfall of 50 to 100 uh, centimeter a year. So sandy uh, loamy soil is the best suited for her and it requires chemical fertilizers. So where is it found? Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra and Bihar. They produce tobacco a lot and India stands as the third largest producer and fourth largest exporter of tobacco in the world. What's export? We are sending it to the other countries. Okay. So next is fiber crops. Okay, fiber crops is cotton that is used for textile industry that is known as fiber crops. What is important here? Cotton and jute. So cotton is uh, an important industrial and fiber crop. Okay, it gives raw material to whom? The cotton textile industry. So it is a tropical and a subtropical crop. It requires a temperature of, for this you can make a table again, okay, 21 degree to 24 degree Celsius and a rainfall of 50 to 100 
centimeter. Black cotton soil is uh, best suited and it's one of the Kharif crops. So where is it found? Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Haryana, Mandya Pradesh, Punjab, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Now India is the largest cotton growing in and is the th third largest producer of raw cotton in the world. Next is beverage crops that is uh, for the purpose of drinks. Coffee and tea are one of the most important beverage crops is that we have in India. Okay. Tea is important and it's cheapest of all the beverages and India is the second largest producer of tea world after China. Now three four things we have after China so you make a point single point and understand it. Tea is a plantation crop. It's a subtropical and a tropical crop requires a temperature of 21 degree to 30 degree Celsius and a rainfall of 150 to 250 centimeter a year. Now it's grown where, where there is a lot of soil is very deep and it's very fertile okay and uh, it requires hill slopes. So slopes that are there, hills that are there which should be uh, slopey not straight or slant in a way but very slope and altitude of 1200 to 2400 meters above the sea level. So it's grown mostly in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, West Bengal, Assam. Okay, uh, we do grow in Karnataka also, but uh, most of them is grown here. Okay, tea, okay, tea, coffee, we go coffee, okay. So, uh, I would not like to get into the next portion. Okay, we can get into the next portion. We'll deal with the horticulture and the floriculture also. Okay, horticulture and floriculture. We will finish the portion. Now, cultivation of horticulture is fruits, vegetables, flowers, okay, medicinal and aromatic plants. Aromatic plants which has fragrance. It's called horticulture. Now, it is, uh, it, it's a place where you make a lot of profit. Okay, you should have a land that is very uh, good, efficient land use. You should make good use of the land then all the natural resources are there you should give a lot of you should have skilled employers to do that and it also gives you an advantage to export your goods that are there and provides a national security now we in india have different kinds of climate and we uh, don't get rainfall at the same time in within just within two districts apart one district may be getting, the other district may not be getting. So just think about the all uh, all over India, okay? And what is needed here is soil that is very good. So now India has become one of the important producers of horticulture crops, and second larger, uh, second largest producer of fruits and vegetables in the world next to China. So our production of fruits is 11 percent and vegetables is 7 percent. So horticulture is mostly done in Andhra Pradesh, Haryana. Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh. Floriculture is cultivation of crops, uh, cultivation of flowers for commercial use that is for sale. Now we know the art of growing flowers from a very long time and it has played a significant role in Indian agriculture. Now we have, we have a lot of income that is generated through making or growing flowers and gives a lot of employment opportunities to farmers. Okay especially women and uh, they can have a lot of export to the other countries also. Now our climatic condition is suitable for the growth of flowers and uh, India is known traditional for traditional flowers like marigold, rose, jasmine, okay, prosandra and aster. Now cut flowers include orchid, gladiolus, carnation, anthurium and uh, lilies. Okay, these are the flowers that are there. Then where is it found? It's found in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Punjab, Haryana and West Bengal. So this is what is India land uh, resources. Okay, so 
it's an easy lesson. You can uh, understand it uh, if you read it once. There's nothing that very complicated in this lesson, okay? So this is what I had to say in India Land Resources. Thank you students for listening.